just about more a little further than those pillars that you see. And so we've been watching and waiting to see if it would happen, where you know that if it comes, it will, it will be a, a fire because it's all, it's an unburned area. So it, it concerns us. It seems like this is under control, so we're going to hope that it is. And you were talking earlier about um, area. So it, it concerns us. It seems like this is under control, so we're going to hope that it is. And you were talking earlier about um, about the, the, the winds tonight that you're going to be... Come there. We will um, provide meals, and um, we will just um, respond to everybody's um, immediate needs. And um, if, uh, if we need to open up other shops. Right. And, um, and yet once, and then we see something like this where it actually burned up toward that home that was on a little bit of a plateau. And, and what's scary, what's sad also is that even if, even homes that had very good clearance can also go up because right. of that spotting that we talked about and the embers that are forced. of the Jesusita fire captured from above as strong gusty afternoon winds pushed the flames into homes where most of the firefighting effort was focused. When we got was leading a strike team of five engines trying to save homes on Palomino Road along the eastern flank of the fire. We didn't have enough time to be so it could be seen for miles away. Towering walls of flame were fanned by the powerful winds pouring thick black smoke into the air that at one point blanketed most of the Santa Barbara area. Water dropping health and retardant dropping air tankers did the best they could for as long as they could until the trekking personnel from across the state are now battling to contain the fire and protect property from the air and on the ground, a fight that will continue through the night. We'll still have people out ramped up this afternoon, as Keith alluded to in his package. Now, we've had winds up around 65 miles an hour this afternoon when the pressure gradient between northern Santa Barbara County and southern Santa Barbara County were at its maximum. Right now, the gradients have trended uh, a little bit less. That's why maybe we're seeing a little bit of a lull in the activity. But don't let that lull you into a false sense of security. These winds are very uh, unpredictable at times and very a very large swath of flames out there tonight really illuminating much of the south coastal plain tonight boy that is just massive you can see there it is really running into some pretty heavy fuels to help keep that fire going all right let's talk a little bit about the weather hills were burning to the ground some residents started watering their roofs with sprinklers willing to defend their homes until they're this is what's left of one home in the hills above Santa Barbara before embers from the Jesusita fire blew over. By the time we got on it, it was uh, fully involved. Fire crews weren't able to save the home, but they were able to prevent the surrounding homes from the same fate. If this thing would have been left alone for very much longer, we would have had two other structures involved. Crews have been stretched thin and are working with little sleep. There's a lot of fatigue out here. But they tell me they train for situations like this. This is what we do. And they're gearing up for the work ahead. We will be up uh, all night. Live aerial footage up above the hills in Santa Barbara. You can see fire crews out there trying to contain another little spot fire here that is blowing up slope. And uh, boy, just uh, some very warm, very dry conditions out there, even at this hour. Temperatures into the 80s. Uh, we have night uh, helicopters uh, dropping water tonight. You, they're using night vision technology to make those water drops, as well as firefighters on the ground. They'll continue to work through the night as well, trying to slow the fire's progress and its destructive path through residential areas. Strike teams have been sent into neighborhoods threatened by the fire. Their goal tonight, save as many homes as possible. Uh, Cal Fire is saying tonight that there is an unknown number of structures that have been destroyed. They just simply do not know how many tonight. More than 2,000 people have been forced to evacuate their homes. That number could grow as well as the fire continues to spread. And there is, are, as well, there are more than 800 firefighters now battling, battling this wildfire. There's nowhere near containment. Again, to repeat, night, 0% containment, unknown number of structures lost. It's going to be another long night. We just heard on the radio from the um, uh, incident commanders here that, that it's breached and it's now burning up over into the pine trees. And that happened in what, just the last five minutes or so, maybe ten minutes? That's right. And that would explain why it's throwing up, if it's in the, into those pine trees that haven't been touched, why it's throwing up so much black smoke. Yes, it's, it's, um, it's got plenty of fuel at the moment, and unfortunately it's crossed over 
or it's 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 crossed the fire retardant lines and it's uh, at least threatening East Camino Cielo at the moment. And I just want to remind our viewers that uh, just about 10 minutes ago, same time, we received word that people, anyone north of Foothill west to 154 should evacuate immediately. Again, anyone north of Foothill west all the way to 154. There's an updated map for you of the mandatory evacuation area going all the way to 154. We had an eyewitness who called in about 10 minutes ago, <clears throat> excuse me, who was live at 154 and Bishop Diego High School. And he looked up and he just said, Part of that mountain was just up in flames and it just exploded about 15, 20 minutes ago. So again, anyone north of Foothill, west of 154, get out of that area. All right, Nick, um, so, so the, what you're seeing right now, just large flames burning up into some of those uh, trees high up into the, um, toward the ridge, r ridge line, is that yes, correct? Yes, I, I can see flames burning um, at the top of Gibraltar Mountain right now. All right, Nick, we definitely appreciate it. But you're in a safe place? Yes, currently here, uh, I don't believe we're really in any danger. And um, as I talk to you, I'm looking at a line of about 100 uh, uh, hand crew guys that are re returning from the mountain and coming into the park. Situation here, clearly a dark sky well above these flames, and it's stopping traffic, it's stopping shoppers, everyone coming out to take a look uh, to see what we've got. CJ Pola. And Joe, can you give us, we have no... The official word to evacuate, you need to use common sense if the... The winds are blowing that strongly, okay. the fire is moving that quickly. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Jessica. Um, then, you know, we're waiting to hear for the official mandatory evacuation orders and warnings, but you got to use common sense, and if the fire's coming your way, you got to be ready to leave. If you feel nervous, mm -hmm. take, don't take a chance. You can always go back, just pack up, get what you, get what you need, and, and get out of there just to be safe. And uh, if if conditions change and get better. On the eastern flank jumped the fire retardant lines that uh, fire hand crews laid at today as well. A Gibraltar and, Road area. Yes, and yeah. it, it has crossed or, or moving toward East Camino Cielo. So the, the fire seems to be growing on both flanks here. We do have a mandatory evacuation order for all residents north of Foothill Road, east of Highway 154 to Ontario Road. <laughs> And Marotta Lane. This is in addition to all of the previous mandatory evacuation orders. And we had John Allman on the telephone. John Allman is uh, with the Santa Barbara City Fire Department. Even though nothing official has been released for anything on the west side of 154, uh, we did ask him if you are on that si that immediate side of 154, what should you should should you be getting ready, preparing yourself? He said yes, he probably should. Although again, no official announcement has been made. So. Uh, just be on stand. How much time you have to get out, but you can always gauge it by the strength of the winds. And the winds are blowing just so hard out there. And Alan was saying earlier that we could get gusts of up to 60 miles per hour. And Alan, that's pretty strong out there. Yeah, Paul, that's really strong. And I think those winds are starting to finally materialize. It took some time today. For now, the bulk of the heavier winds is out across the northeastern quadrant of that fire, but it's blowing in a northeast to southwest direction. And that is something that we have not seen this entire fire. We did see it during the T fire, so it's completely switched up direction. On Tuesday when it broke out, it was a west wind. Yesterday it was a northwest wind. Today it's mixed up completely. It's blowing it off to the west. In fact, we're seeing it push. How much time you have to get out, but you can always gauge it by the strength of the winds. And the winds are blowing just so hard out there. And Alan was saying earlier, that we could get gusts of up to 60 miles per hour. And Alan, that's pretty strong out there. Yeah, Paul, that's really strong. And I think those winds are starting to finally materialize. It took some time today. For now, the bulk of the heavier winds is out across the northeastern quadrant of that fire, but it's blowing in a northeast to southwest direction. And that is something that we have not seen this entire fire. We did see it during the T fire, so it's completely switched up direction. On Tuesday when it broke out, it was a west wind. Yesterday it was a northwest wind. Today it's mixed up completely. It's blowing it off to the west. In fact, we're seeing it.